Hello everyone. In my previous videos, we have discussed primitive reflexes, its importance, and we have also discussed modus reflex, its importance, what goes wrong if it is not integrated on time, and exercises to integrate modus reflex. Today, we will discuss asymmetrical tonic neck reflex, that is ATNR, its importance and its significance. So let us start. Asymmetrical tonic neck reflex, you will notice it in an infant if you gently turn their head to one side, the arm and leg on the same side will straighten, that is extend, while the arm and leg on the opposite side will bend, that is flex. It develops at 18 weeks after conception. It is the cause of the kicking by baby and the womb, assisting the development of the vestibular system, balance and muscle tone. All this continues until birth when in conjunction with the spinal gallant reflex, this head and limb movements help the baby on its journey along the birthing canal. An infant do the part of passing through the birth canal with the help of ATNR. ATNR is responsible for developing hand and eye coordination. The connection between the hand and eyes help develop depth perception and eye-hand coordination. Once out of the womb, the ATNR continues to assist the development of balance, vision, coordination and spatial awareness. It also ensures that the infant has an unobstructed passage of air when lying on its stomach. When lying stomach up, this reflex helps in rolling over. The head turns and the arm and leg extend. The opposite leg flexes that is bends and its heels rocks and the baby rolls over the extended arm. As the baby comes over onto the stomach, the opposite flexed arm is there to steady and cushion the fall and thereby save the baby from banging its face on the floor. It is most evident between 2 to 3 months of age. This reflex rapidly fades and is not evident normally after 6 months of age. Persistence or the tension of this reflex beyond 6 months of age greatly hampers development. It, if retained, the child will have difficulty walking normally when turning his head or problems writing and reading when head movement is needed, which is always there. For example, writing while looking back and forth to the blackboard or the book. Reading difficulties, hand-eye coordination problems, awkward walk or gait, difficulty in school, immature handwriting, difficulty in sports, maths and reading issues, poor balance, eye, ear, foot and hand dominance will not be on the same side. Difficulty in things that require crossing over the midline of the body and poor depth perception, shoulder, neck and hip problems will be there in retained ATNR. Now reasons for poor handwriting is because write fluently with our thoughts moving freely to the pan, we need to be able to cross the midline. Have you ever seen handwriting that starts tight, even cramped on the left side of the page and then falls away? literally sloping downwards or upwards or both as the pen moves left to right across the page. Often the writing will become larger, scrawly and unevenly sized as because of retained ATNR. As the hand moves across the page from left to right, the head moves or turns to the right only slightly but enough to trigger the reflex action causing the right arm to extend and the handwriting to slew. The opposite can occur for the left-handed, the left arm flexing as the head turns right. This is an example of handwriting with retained ATNR versus integrated ATNR. So this was all about asymmetrical tonic neck reflex its significance and what happens if it is not integrated on time. 
So in my upcoming videos, I have demonstrated how you can check whether this ATNR is still present in your child or if it is integrated. And I have also demonstrated exercise to overcome this ATNR or to suppress this ATNR. If you find this video informative, then do like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.